Hello, I'm Dylan, and welcome to lesson six in the series An Introduction to Functions. In this lesson, called Graphs and Formulae, we have a look at how we can take the information represented in a graph and find the equation of the underlying function. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a linear equation from given information and define a quadratic equation from data on a graph. In lesson 5, we analyzed the information given in a graph. But sometimes, the graph doesn't give us all the information we need. So then it becomes very important that we're able to find the formula or the equation that defines the shape of the graph. Now think of this as an example. A family member gives you a special gift. They open up a bank account in your name and they make an initial deposit of 100 Rand. They then make regular further deposits of 20 Rand at a time. This is what the graph looks like. For this example, we're going to think of the interest paid as simply a bonus. We're only going to concentrate on the amount accumulated due to the deposits. And you would like to find out after how many deposits the total amount in your bank account will be 500 Rand. So in terms of working with functions, we want to find out what input value gives the specific output value of 500 Rand. Each deposit is constantly 20 Rand. So the rate of change is 20 Rand. As you know, the equation of a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c. In this formula, m refers to the rate of change. In other words, when we look at the straight line graph, it tells us about the gradient. Remember also from the graph, we saw that the constant was 100 Rand, and that this constant tells us about the balance in the bank account before this balance starts to change. So our equation in this case is given by y is equal to 20x plus 100. In this case, y or the bank balance depends on the number of deposits. So if we want to find out how many deposits accumulate a total of 500 Rand, we need to substitute y equal to 500 Rand into our equation. So in other words, we know that y is equal to 500, and therefore our equation becomes 500 is equal to 20x plus 100. Now in solving for x, I'm going to subtract 100 from both sides of the equation. Therefore, 400 is equal to 20x. And I know that 20 times 20 is equal to 400. Therefore, x is equal to 20. So in other words, after I have made 20 deposits into the bank account, by then my total will be 500 rand. Let's look at another example. In the previous lesson, we had a look at the growth rate of a particular kind of bacteria. We saw that the rate of change is not constant, but that the change in the changes is constant. It was always 2. Let's see if we can determine the equation from these input and output values in the table. And remember, each function has only one purpose, and that is to describe the relationship between variables. What exactly is the relationship between these variables? What does this function have to do to the input values to yield each of the corresponding output values? We already know that the function is not linear because the rate of change is not constant. Let's check this. What does the function need to do to the input value of 1 to give an output of 3? You would be correct if you said that the function simply needs to add 2 to the input value to get the desired output. But if you have another look, this does not apply to the rest of the values in the table. Let's have another look. If we consider the relationship between 2 and its output value of 8, we can clearly see that it's not simply a matter of adding 2. Perhaps this function multiplies the input value by 4 to get the output. But again, this relationship does not hold for the other values in the table. In the previous lesson, we ended up by saying that if the rate of change of the changes is constant, then we're dealing with a quadratic formula. So there's a clue. This is obviously some type of quadratic formula. 
Now remember, a quadratic expression is an expression where one of the terms is the square of the independent variable. And you have been dealing with many examples of quadratic expressions already in your maths career. Here's an example. If you factorize x squared minus 2x minus 3, you'd be dealing with a quadratic expression. Now let's use this clue about quadratics to see if we can find this relationship. I'm going to call the function f, and I'm going to use f of t because it's a function that is based on time. It's a function of time, in other words, t. When t is equal to 1, the number of bacteria is equal to 3. In other words, f of 1 is equal to 3. When time is equal to 2, the number of bacteria rises to 8. In other words, f of 2 is equal to 8. When the input is 2, the output is 8. Input 2, output 8. When f, rather when t is 3, f of 3 is equal to 15. And lastly, f of an input value of 4 is equal to 24. The fact that this is a quadratic function means that to find the output values, I need to square the input values. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take each input and square it. So 1 squared, well 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 2 squared, in other words 2 times 2 is 4. 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is equal to 16. Obviously, there is more to this relationship than just squaring, because this answer is not the same as the output. What can I do to each of these values so that I get the required output values? Well, let's start out by looking at the difference between the squared value and the required output value. So I'm going to make a column for difference, and the difference between these two is 2. The difference between these two values is 4. The difference between these two values is 6. And lastly, the difference between these two values is 8. Do you see a pattern? Look at the difference and compare it to each input value. What is the relationship between the input value of 1 and the difference of 2? And what is the relationship between the input value of 2 and this difference of 4. Do you notice that the input value of 1 can be multiplied by 2 to get to the difference, and the input value of 2 can also be multiplied by 2 to get to the difference? Let's check the other values. 6 is indeed 3 times 2, and 8 follows the same pattern because it is 4 times 2. So in each case, this answer here for the difference is given by the input value multiplied by 2. Input value multiplied by 2, input multiplied by 2, and lastly, input multiplied by 2. So as a summary, we can see that the output value, in this case 24, is generated by the input, which is t squared, and then we need to add 2 times the input t. Now let's write the formula down nice and clearly. The output is equal to the input squared plus 2 times the input. Remember, our output depends on time or the variable t. So in terms of function notation, f of t is equal to t squared plus 2 times t. Now, to make sure that this formula is correct, I'm going to calculate what the output value is when my input is 5. So now, f of 5 will equal to 5 squared plus 2 times 5, which is equal to 25 plus 10. Therefore, f of 5 is equal to 35. Luckily, this corresponds with the value we saw on the graph, so we know that the formula is correct. 
Let's recap. We said that this formula was a quadratic formula. Let's have a look why. Here, as in all quadratic formulae, is the independent variable being squared. And in this case, it just so happens that the coefficient of our squared independent variable is 1. Having determined this formula means that we can now find any values, input and output values, even those that were not initially represented on our graph. I hope that you are now equipped to find linear and quadratic equations.